as you might have seen on my Instagram. I was recently going through some pictures I took over the past few weeks, but at one point I accidentally scrolled back way too far, which ended up working out because I came across some pictures I had taken a really long time ago of some luxury pieces I at one point was considering adding to my collection, but for one reason or another, I didn't. And I thought it might be fun for us to take a walk down memory lane and revisit these things. Most of them I still have pictures of, while others I just remember looking at. I spent a little bit of time trying to think about some pieces that I was tempted by for a little while. So I can share with you some really interesting pieces, most of which are still very much around. So if anything piques your interest in this video, you can still find them out there, except they are significantly more expensive now than they were when I first looked at them. And to be really honest, do I regret not buying these pieces? There are definitely some that I would still consider and some that I wish I had bought, but then there are others that now in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't waste my money on because I know that I would not be able to take advantage of them often enough to justify the, in some cases, insane price tags. But without further ado, if you'd like to take a walk down memory lane with me and look at some beautiful pieces, mainly from Hermes, that I did not pick up, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. I'm just going to apologize in advance because some of these pictures are really quite hideous because to be really honest, before I started doing YouTube, I was never really into taking pictures of things, not things in stores and not things that I owned because I was never going to post pictures of my luxury pieces. So some of these pictures, I was never, these were not made to be shared. I just really took them because I appreciated the piece because I wanted to add them onto my wish list or because I sent some of these to friends of mine to get their feedback or to send these to them as a suggestion for them to look at. So some of them are really not the best pictures. Also, I think these two pieces are like eight years old. So I do apologize if the, these pictures are not the best. But anyway, I found two pictures of two Kelly wallets. Both of them were in matte alligator that I looked at years ago. This was at the very beginning of my Hermes journey. When I was first looking into adding a Kelly wallet to my collection, I first looked at adding one to my collection in matte alligator, but I think these back in the day were already over $10,000. I mean, some of these pictures are eight, nine years old, and I definitely did not have $10,000 to spend on a wallet. And I really don't think I would still, as much as I appreciate these pieces, these now I think would set you back probably 14, if not $15,000 a piece, which is just an insane amount of money to spend on a wallet, even though I do love my Kelly wallets and I do think that they are the kind of piece that are worth investing in because you can use them on a daily basis. You can not only use them as a wallet inside larger bags, but they definitely stand on their own as just a beautiful clutch bag that you can grab and go. I do have a handful of Kelly wallets but I've never spent more than I think my most expensive one is an ostrich one, which is still a lot more money than, than how much anyone should spend on a wallet. Anyway, I digress. Going back to these pieces, I did look into picking up the Kelly wallet in Matt Alligator. I didn't, I could not justify the insane price tags. And I have two here, one in the color vanilla in Matt Alligator and then another one in black. But what these reminded me of and the piece that I wanted to bring up here is the most special Kelly wallet that I have ever seen. It was a Kelly wallet where I think the body of the wallet was made of lisse or also known as shiny alligator. And then it had this incredible gillis detail around the edges in matte alligator, which was incredibly special. If you're not familiar with gillis bag, we recently talked about them in a video where I ranked some of the most unique and most expensive Aramis as bags. If you have not seen that, I'll make sure to have it linked up here so you can see examples of bags that feature the Gillies detail, but I also tried to find a picture. I couldn't find it. I don't know who I sent it to. It might have been in like a WhatsApp message or, message or something, and that's why I don't have it. But I remember taking a picture of that wallet because it was so incredibly special. So I tried to find a picture of it, 
but the body of the wallet was made of lisey alligator and then it had the gillis detail and what was really surprising is that it wasn't actually any more expensive than a regular kelly would have been so that gillis detail didn't really add anything to the price but it was still way over ten thousand dollars so i did not add it to my collection do i regret not doing it i mean i couldn't have spent over ten thousand dollars on a wallet so it's not like I regret it, but I definitely would not mind having it in my collection now just because I love my Kelly wallet so much. And if I ever found it on the pre-loved market, you know, I think I could justify spending maybe seven, eight thousand dollars on one of these wallets, which is still an insane amount of money. But over 10, I think it is just way too much money, especially considering how insanely delicate alligator is. And these are things that you will physically handle. So these are not things that come with a shoulder strap or with a top handle, which would mean that you don't have to touch and handle the wallet itself quite as much. So, you know, as much as I love these, I think they are really quite expensive for an SLG. And then if I'm trying to be really picky, which I'm not saying that this is the reason I did not buy it. I just found that it was way too expensive. But an additional thing that I kind of picked up on, which I think is the same when it comes to my Ostrich Kelly wallet. If you look at a Kelly wallet that's made of exotic skin, it's never made of one single sheet of leather as they are when it comes to Kelly wallets that are made of goat skin or Epsom. Instead, the front part and the back part of the wallet are made of two separate pieces of leather that are stitched onto a third piece at the base, which I don't really like it. I don't like how it kind of like comes to a pause at the front and at the back of the wallet. I just don't think it's quite as refined as it is when it comes to other pieces within the same family. And then another detail that you'll notice when it comes to alligator pieces specifically is that they don't feature the Kelly lock detail on the inside zipper. Instead, they have a tassel detail just so I guess you don't scratch the inside of the wallet as much as you would if you had a lock in there or it doesn't create an imprint on the outside of the wallet. So these are two details that you'll notice when it comes to alligator pieces specifically, which is really not the reason I didn't buy these pieces, but it's just something interesting to mention here. As beautiful as these Kelly wallets are, I am definitely not losing sleep over not having them in my collection. But this next piece on my list, I am really upset about not buying back in the day because this piece used to be so unpopular and so underrated that believe it or not, it used to go on sale quite regularly, especially at Barney's. My first apartment in New York was really close to Barney's downtown. And I remember seeing this bag on sale or being offered. I was a Barney's card member and I used to get emails and different offers and this bag was always included not only in exotic leather but also in regular leather which is the Margot bag. It's a bag that I'm sure you are familiar with at this point. It has been all the craze for the past season but it is something I have been talking about for the past couple of years and now it's definitely not something that you would believe because this bag has become incredibly popular and insanely hard to get but it used to be so underrated that they always had this bag in stock in a ton of different colors and it used to go on sale regularly because no one really looked at them i remember seeing these bags on sale really really heavily discounted in the mo most beautiful exotic leathers but back then you know i was really new to hermes i was constantly saving up for my next bag at the brand and I didn't want to spend even three or four thousand dollars on a bag that I wasn't really familiar with and now in hindsight I so wish I had pulled the trigger back then. I'm not sure if they had the Margo 17 available or when that first launched but they definitely had size 15 around because I remember seeing these larger bags at Barney's and also the Raw store. I remember having them on display at all times. Anytime I stopped by after they launched their men's collection, which I think was back in, let me think, 2018, 2019 was the first year that the Raw started doing ready to wear for men. And I was invited to the store to have a look at the collection. And I remember having them having a ton of Margos on display. So it really wasn't as popular as it is now. It was not only less expensive, but I could have also got them for a steal. Anyway, there is no point. 
being upset about it now because I cannot turn back the hand of time. And if I still want this bag in my collection, I can still find it out there. But I am a little upset about not adding this particular piece to my collection. And then another brand, which again, I don't have a picture of, but this is definitely something that I still think about every now and again. And I do ask about this piece anytime I walk past one of these boutiques or one of the boutiques of this brand which is a moina card holder now moina similar to the row has really only come into its own in the past few years even though it's a brand that has been around for a really long time i mean they say it's been around a lot longer than it actually has i mean okay let me backtrack it this is a brand that has a long-standing heritage but it was acquired and reinvented by lvmh which is when they really came onto the luxury scene and they were around for a few years before people really started noticing them. And I remember walking down Madison Avenue at one point and seeing this random store, which was Moina. I stopped by and they showed me this beautiful card holder. It was a really, really simple card holder, but it was in the Himalaya finish, which if you know Hermes, you know that they very rarely do anything smaller in fact i don't think they ever do slg that's not true i have seen them do petite ash slgs in himalaya but it is really rare for them to offer any sort of slgs in the himalaya finish but moina did back in the day and it wasn't overly expensive i think the card holder was just around $1,500, somewhere between fifteen and $1,700. But I didn't buy it thinking that, you know, what is this random leather brand? It's not something I had ever heard of or I had been familiar with. So I thought, you know, $2,000 with sales tax is still a lot of money to spend on a piece of SLG when that money could go towards something from Hermes that I'll appreciate a lot more. Well, now in hindsight, I wish I had bought that piece because anytime I go into a Moina store now and I ask about this card holder, they look at me like I have three eyes. It's not something that anyone's ever heard of or anyone's ever seen. They say that the only things that come in the Himalaya finish is their bags. And some of those do come with a card holder or a little pouch, but those are not things that can be bought separately. And I am convinced that it's something that I was shown, but I cannot find a picture of it, unfortunately. But that is definitely something that lives in my head rent free. I mean, again, it's not something that I'm really upset about. I think the only thing that I I do wish I had bought back in the day is the Royal Margo bag, but the Moina card holder was a really special piece. Next on my list are two RMS bags, one of which is a piece that we talked about in my last video, which is the Victoria bag. The Victoria has been making a comeback, but it is a really iconic Hermes bag. In fact, it was one of the first Hermes bags I was ever introduced to at an airport boutique. And it's something that I was offered a couple of times over the years. But the piece that we're talking about here is the larger Victoria. The Victoria traditionally comes in size 35. That's the most iconic Victoria but it was also available in several different sizes. There are different iterations of the Victoria. There are duffel bags. There is also a briefcase, briefcase version of the Victoria, which was part of the men's line. And then this is the larger Victoria, which is not the duffel, but I think it was called the Victoria Voyage, which is a beautiful understated top handle bag. This bag doesn't have any obvious hardware, any in-your-face branding. It's all about the exquisite shape, the incredible craftsmanship, and it really lets the leather shine because they are always made of the most beautiful Hermes leathers. More often than not, you'll find these pieces in grain skin, so in Clemence or Togo, and then they also offer the briefcase, I think in Epsom and some stiffer leathers. But anyway, this is a bag that I was offered when I was looking for, I think, a Birkin 40. And this was at the women's store on Madison. They said that they rarely, if ever, get Birkins in a larger size. So this is a bag that they showed me. I think it was like four or $5,000. It wasn't too expensive. But again, I was trying to save all my money for my next Birkin. So I decided to skip this bag. And this is something that I do wish I had in my collection because I think I would use it a lot more often now than I do any of my quota bags or my more popular MS bags. It was really a stunning creation. But the reason I am not 
too upset about not buying it back then is because this is a style that you can find on the pre-love market at amazing prices. It's not a, an overly popular MS bag. It's not something I ever hear anyone talking and definitely not raving about. And since it's not that popular, you can usually find these at pretty reasonable prices. So I always keep my eyes open. And if I ever came across this bag, it's certainly something that I would be open to adding to my collection because it is a really beautiful, understated, user-friendly bag. It features two longer top handles, this particular version, which means that you can also put them over your shoulder. The only thing that I'm not sure about is that these bags are quite elongated and a little bit narrower in the women's line which is what I didn't love about it, but I guess I could also go for the duffel version where the handles are a little bit shorter or even the briefcase version. But yeah, I think it is a beautiful bag. And if you like a larger bag, but something that is still a little bit more manageable, something that isn't too overwhelming, yet it packs a punch in terms of how much you can fit in there. The original Victoria is a great line for you to look into because it is a little bit more elongated and a little bit more narrow. It will not overwhelm you even if you are a little bit more petite. So this is definitely an iconic, classic, just beautifully elegant bag, which I am a huge fan of. And then the next bag is basically the polar opposite. This is a bag that's in your face, that's loud, that will enter the room before you do. It's a conversation starter, but it is the most beautiful exotic bag I have ever seen. And that is because of the leather. Obviously I have an entire dedicated video on Hermes exotics, discussing the differences between the different types of exotic skins. This particular bag is made of matte alligator. And I think this bag is the very reason matte alligator is my favorite exotic skin because the scales are so beautifully pronounced on this bag that this is the one that made me fall in love with alligator, even though it's not a bag I picked up. It was a bag that I was offered in Miami in the design district a few years ago at this point, quite a few years ago. It was a Constance 18 in matte Mississippi alligator in the color blue peon. And I still remember the price. This bag was $29,300 plus sales tax, of course, which I don't know how much Florida sales tax is, but it would have been way over $30,000. And I just did not feel comfortable spending that much money on a Constance bag. I think back then, I don't think, because getting before getting my first Constance 18, which was only a few years ago in a box, I had once bought a Constance 24, but I don't know if it was before or after this. I think this might've been the very first Constance I was ever offered. And because I wasn't even familiar with Constance bags, by this point, I had already bought a handful of quota bags. So I had already had Hermes bags in my collection, but I'm not sure about a Constance. Anyway, long story short, as beautiful as this piece of alligator was, the color was not something that I would have ever worn. And also a Constance bag that's over $30,000 to me was just an overkill, but it is still to this day, one of the most beautiful alligator bags that I have ever come across because of how beautiful this particular piece of alligator was. Obviously when it comes to exotic skins, it's so important that when you get offered a bag, you inspect it properly because no two exotic bags will look identical because they are natural leathers and the distribution of the scales, the marks, and the way they sit on the bag will be slightly different on every single bag. And this bag to me was just perfection. The last thing here is also a recent pass. It's something that I actually came across, I think in 2021, we were in lockdown back then, which is, well, not in full lockdown. You could still shop, but you had to make an appointment to go into stores. It was quite complicated. There weren't many tourists. So I think that's the only reason this, this piece was available, which is, I think it's called the Rolex Day Date. Now, I, if you watched my last wishlist video, you know that I have been looking at adding another timepiece to my collection. And before I was really loyal to Rolex, I would really only spend money on timepieces from Rolex or 
the tag. So this was something that was right up my alley. It was a Rolex day date in the color Ever Rose, which is Rolex's rose gold. I happen to love Rolex's rose gold. I don't really like their yellow gold pieces. Their yellow, their full yellow gold pieces are quite loud for my liking, but I think their Ever Rose, basically their rose gold is really beautiful. It is slightly more expensive than their yellow gold pieces because in order to get that shade of rose gold, they have to add a little bit more platinum to yellow gold, which is what gives this these pieces such a beautiful color. But because of the added platinum, it is slightly more expensive. At least that's what I was told. And this particular piece was in the larger size. So I think day dates come in two different sizes for men. They come in a size 36 and a size 40. This was in size 40, which is why I thought it looked a little bit too overwhelming on my wrist. And it had this beautiful tone on tone dial, which I think they call sun dust. But what made this special is that it also featured individual emerald cut diamonds on the dial too, which I really loved. Now, this is definitely not a watch for the faint of heart, not only because of the price. I think these watches are close to $50,000 at this point, but also because of how they make you look. But I definitely think that this is the definition of a luxury investment, not necessarily because you could buy it and then resell it, even though you probably could these days just because of how rare or not rare, but how exclusive Rolex has become. But also because this is something to me, an investment is something that you can use and enjoy for a lifetime, which will then eventually reduce the cost of wear. So that's how I personally look at these larger investments. And this is definitely something that you could have in your collection for a lifetime and you can pass it down to generations to come. But um, yeah, it was a beautiful thing. But during lockdown, I just did not feel like spending this kind of money. And it's something that I do regret because I think if I walked into Rolex and asked for this watch, I would be turned away before I could even say the word day date just because they have become so hard to get and i had the chance to buy it back then it was available it was a display piece and there wasn't a waiting list there was there wasn't anyone around to buy these watches so it was around and it's something that i still look at every now and again i mean even just looking at this picture now i'm like this is something that i would not mind having in my collection but again, I'm not sure if it's a regret just because it's not 100% my taste. As beautiful as it is, I just don't feel like it is me. And it is way too much money to spend on something that I don't feel really resonates with my personal aesthetic. So maybe it's good that I didn't buy it when I had the chance because, yeah, everything happens for a reason. So I'm not going to lose sleep over this. The only one piece that I'm mad about not buying back when I first had the chance is the Royal Margot. The rest, you know, they're great pieces, but I can certainly live without every single one of them. But this brings us to the end of today's video, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Are there any pieces that you saw in this video that you really think I should have bought? Or are there any examples from your life? Are there any pieces that you really regret missing out on? please let me know in the comment section. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and hear about your experience. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I will try to make sure to list and link all the pieces from this video that are still available now, especially if I can find them on the pre-loved market at a more reasonable price. But I just really appreciate you being here and watching, and I will see you back here with a new video really, really soon.